Go. Good afternoon, Mayor. What can I say about Mayor Mike Ginelli? He's been a family friend for many years. He served our town and our library with dignity and is currently successfully leading our community with the same grace and business-like reputation. Thank you, Mayor, for taking the time from your busy schedule to help us celebrate the 80th anniversary of the library by adding your voice to our digital history of the library. Could you please fill us in a little bit about your career with the Town of Sea Caucus, culminating in your being mayor at this time? Well, I think Sea Caucus has been my life from the beginning. Um, I graduated high school, went off to college, wasn't really crazy about it. I came back at uh, probably my second year of college, and I paid a visit to Mayor Paul Miko and told him I didn't think I was really the right person to be in college, could I get a job? And uh, Mayor Miko, being the man that he is, uh, did get me a job in public works, uh, where I continued my college and my technical school at night, but worked for public works uh, during the day, and I really that's where I started my career. I was there for almost 40 years. I went up the ranks from a laborer to a foreman, to assistant superintendent, to superintendent of public works for many years, where um, we actually forged some bonds and did some creative things here, or at the old public library. Uh, I stayed there until, oh God, I guess I retired in, I'm going to say 2006, when I decided to run for council. Uh, became a councilman and then ran for mayor in 2010. In the meantime, my career also was uh, been a volunteer fireman, still currently active for over 40 years, and actually served as high as the rank of chief of the department. So Sea Caucus has been my life. And this is this is where I, I moved here when I was about six years old. Um, like that song, I'm going to die in a small town. I'm probably right. going to die here, <laughs> and this is this is where I want to be. It's a beautiful town, and uh, you've made it even more beautiful with some of your fine work. You've been uh, a friend of the library long before the friends of the library were even uh, twinkling in my eye. Please give us an overview of the various ways that you were able to assist with the library. I know you'll begin with Plaza Center because you're too young to remember that library that was the original library at the top of the old town hall. I kind of do remember that. Do you not, really? Not, not to the not to the point where I could talk about it, but I do remember it, uh, and I do remember that building and how sensational that building was with the spiral staircase, and uh, I, I remember that building well. As a kid, we used to play in the back and, and uh, visit the police department frequently, and, and it was a great space, but, you know, I was always of the opinion, and, and, and throughout my career, I, and I still am, as mayor, I think that all the agencies should work together. Even though we, we may be separate autonomous agencies, we're really all one town. Um, so I was a big advocate then, as I am now, of doing anything I can to not only promote the library, but to help the library with different events, like events that you put together, the mini fair. Um, I thought it was important for, for the town to help you guys to make sure that those events really were as successful as they could be. And, and since you started to where we are today, it's grown and grown and grown. It's become quite the community event that people wait for each and every year. So I think it's it was really important. And I always took it, um, I always take things personal. And I feel if you don't get involved, sometimes things just don't work out the way they should. And not only from an economic standpoint, where we can save you a lot of money by helping you. And no matter how you look at it, whether it's the Board of Education, the town, the sewage authority, the library, it's all the same tax dollar. So wherever we can save that kind of money, put that kind of effort forward to make things better, um, I think that's what it's all about. Well, I think that's why you're successful. One of the most outstanding moments I remember with you in the Plaza Center Library was knocking the hole in the wall between the library and the firehouse when engine company number one agreed to allow us to use their meeting room for special events mm -hmm. 
And that was just a magnificent moment that I can never forget. And I have to thank Mayor just for that one. That wasn't but, uh, that wasn't an easy one on anybody. No, it wasn't. You know, because you know, us firefighters, we dig our heels in sometimes. But um, that turned out to be great. And oh. you know, right now the pre-K is at that building, and that particular room serves as a multi-purpose room for those kids, and as a place where they play and, and sometimes have lunch. And you know, in the event of emergency, congregate. So um, that was that was a great achievement. And you know what, the firemen. Um, I don't know how many years later we are now, but they also have great quarters where they're happy. So we really made the best of both worlds. You certainly did. And I think after a while it was um, just agreed upon that it was so wonderful for the library. I think it enhanced our chances of getting this new library. But the firemen benefited. And in fact, they'll be coming in for an interview next week. So uh, it's, it'll be nice to get their perspective as well. I think, but I you, think that you're going to find out that the firemen are very happy. I think they are very happy from what I hear that uh, somebody did a great job for them. Um, I think you were also involved with the construction of the first ramp to the back of the library and that we were able to bring in handicapped mm -hmm. uh, people in a wheelchair. Of course, we didn't have the bathroom facilities, but that should be a big step as well that um, it became somewhat handicapped accessible thanks to your department, your men, the men under your department, so um, we appreciate it all. In many libraries, you touched on this before, in many libraries, and I've traveled around the state, directors never get to pick up the phone and dial the mayor, and dial his cell phone, as I did this morning when I texted you. They just don't get that opportunity to work with all of the departments. It's, trying to struggle to figure out how to do something within their own. But in Sea Caucus, it's different. And I think it starts at the top. You touched on that, but could you um, say a little bit more about that, how you promote communication? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, I think that's important. And I think speaking to the mayor, and uh, listen, I, I carry my phone around like, uh, I can't tell you, there's no place I go without it. And, whether it's email or text or phone calls, I try to answer each and every one. And I think it's important that you do that. And I think it's important that the mayor does that, and not someone else that maybe um, sometimes speaks for the mayor but doesn't speak the way the mayor may be thinking himself. Uh, because I touched on it, and I think anytime we can help any department, anytime we can do even the smallest thing to make this community a better place is something that the mayor should be directly involved in. I don't want anyone else um, taking a position that may be opposite of what mine is. And my position is never to say no unless you have to. And I think that's been successful for me. Um, and I hate to say no to anything, but sometimes you do have to. But if there's a way to do something, and a department head or the director has an idea, and there's an idea that we can put forward that's going to benefit the community, I think that's a decision that should be coming from me and passed down to the council. And we should do everything in our power to make that happen. Um, you know, I talked, I had a meeting today at the Board of Education, and sometimes when people get up and speak at meetings, administrators and elected officials become, I don't know, caught off guard. I think it's the best thing that could happen. Whether they speak in favor of something you're doing or whether they speak against something you're doing, I think the best ideas come out of criticism, and there's always things that can be corrected. And if you don't hear them from your constituents or your department heads or your directors, you're, you're, you're fighting a losing battle because you need to hear that stuff. So when a director like Jen May may call me on an issue, we may disagree, we may agree. But I'm going to hear her side of it and, and really decide for what's good for everyone in the community. Well, that is just wonderful. And it's an envy. I must say, I still meet with a lot of my director friends. And it's the envy of so many of them that they still can't quite do that. So you were born and raised in this town and you love it and you, it, it may be the reasoning that's how your mom and dad raised you, but uh, it certainly is an enviable position for many people. I, I wait, I, you know, we have council meetings and your husband was a former mayor. Um, I remember some past administrations and I worked for many. I worked for Mayor Meekle, Mayor Just, Mayor Owo. Um, that they would discourage people from speaking out. 
I encourage people to speak out. And I think it's so important, even if it doesn't matter who you vote for, or none of that really matters. But it took me 10 minutes to get in here because two residents grabbed me. One asking me, why does the, the library need a red van? What do you <laughs> use it for? And I got to explain it. And the guy walked away saying, well, you know what? I agree with you. But people have, you know, people, people like to speak what's on their mind. And if maybe they're going to be right sometimes, and maybe they just need an explanation of the facts. And it happens all the time. And, and, and that's what I think makes Seacock is such a great place that people aren't afraid now to get up and speak. That's exactly right. There's no fear of retribution. Um, I know uh, that there are some upcoming events and ongoing projects that involve the town and the library. You know, you work together in a, in a collaboration. And uh, I was wondering, uh, you know, such as recently with the 10-year anniversary, we had to remove all the furniture out of the, the room downstairs. We do come up with some wonderful ideas for you and the DPW. But um, do you have anything special in mind? And I know you're going to work on the 80th anniversary probably with Jen May and the Board of Trustees. Are there any other uh, activities that you co-sponsor? Well, Jen has been, um, you know, to the Friends of the Library and, and Jen, uh, we do a, a summer concert movie series and actually they sponsor every movie that we do. And, and that's great for us. And you know, they started off a little slow, but if you go tonight, Buckhole Park, um, I bet you see 300 kids there watching a movie. And that's the outreach that, listen, this summer has been not only a wonderful summer as far as the weather uh, has been, but it's been a wonderful summer for the, the people of Seacombs. So we have so many things going on. And that's just one of the events we put together. I know the mini fair is coming up in uh, September. I know that Lee Penna does a lot of community outreach downstairs, and I know she's got some things that we've spoken about. I think the more that we can do to bring people into this building, so they come here on their own, we don't need yeah. to bring them in. Um, but I think that's you know the best thing we can do. And you know when you talk about this building, um, it also doubles as a, a community shelter. And um, we just received the grant to actually to put a generator, a natural gas powered generator, and to power this and the OEM, which is kind of close by. But we've used this building during Hurricane Irene, Hurricane Sandy, where we had to actually put place people in place where they couldn't stay in their homes. And quite frankly, look around. What better place would you want to be in if you couldn't be home? So um, this building does a lot, and this building really stands as a, a symbol of what the community is all about. I think so too, and, and it's wonderful the way you've come up with ideas to use it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's something new evolving every day. So <clears throat> I think that's especially especially uh, rewarding for the for the community and the library. The library gets a lot of recognition from some of the things that you've done. FEMA being here, mm -hmm. maybe we got a little hits on that one a little bit. They went lengthy, but it was still a very important part of library service as well as town. Well, it was service. And, and, you know, in, in the, the time that we went through with both those storms that we just spoke about have any ability to have a room like the Panasonic room. And I know it did go on a little longer than we mm -hmm. would have liked it to. Um, number one, it gave us an upper hand. The people from FEMA were right in our community to service our residents and the town. And it was a great place to host them. Absolutely. You know, we've collected since Hurricane Sandy, my last check this morning, close to $500,000. And a lot of that was done by communicating with people that were here telling us what to do, telling us how to approach issues. So when you have that one-on-one -on -one contact and you're not talking over a telephone or, or taking a one-day trip to South Jersey, I could have came here six, seven times a day and they were here. So that was a great thing that I really it, it was. Thank you. And thank you for allowing us to do that. I say us like I'm still here, but you know. Uh, new technology is advancing at a rapid pace. And I think there's something with robotics that you're working on with the library as well. And that interests me so much since I have so much to uh, talk about in our family with robotics. What is that all about? Well, I have a couple of gentlemen that um, have worked with us over the summer and put together classes. But I know they're looking to expand that. Uh, when you talk about technology, I, mean, I think that 
Jen and her staff have done a great job of keeping up with things that change almost on a daily basis. Absolutely. And walking in here today, I mean, every computer that I looked at had a person at it. Um, and I think that's wonderful. But we have to keep looking at ways. I think the, the thing that we maybe lack a little bit is the business resource center of what this building houses. And I think um, from my perspective, I think we need to do a little bit better job on reaching out to the business community because Secaucus, whether you know it or not, has become the data center capital of the US, United States of America. We have more square footage of data centers in the town of Secaucus than anywhere else in the country. And I think we have a good opportunity now to, to form some really good partnerships with those folks. Um, we have the power grid to support it, we have the fiber to support it, and most of all, is location. When we talk about the town of Sea Caucus, you can't say location enough because we are in the best place probably in the country for businesses to really continue to stay here and grow. So I think from the standpoint of something that we maybe don't do enough of, I think that would be good. I agree with you. We did in the beginning, and of course it was because one hand washed the other. The donations were wonderful. And then as anything else, you get busy and things change. But I do agree, we invited these businesses to come and settle in the Meadowlands, and we really didn't have what they needed. We did get in the software and some of the specialties that they needed after a while. But I agree with you, there could be so much more done when there's time and space for that. And I think that we'll, we'll certainly, that's no fault of anyone's, I think we'll no. certainly really begin to move in that direction. I, and I agree. I, I love the idea the Business Resource Center was my thinking at the time, and it, it took a lot of arm twisting to get that put up on the building. So um, I'm happy to hear that that's your thinking. I wish I was still working again. Uh, um, the library has been advancing the cause for diversity with its programming and, and purchasing throughout the years and grants that we received for foreign language materials but you are well known for embracing the multiculturalism in this community. Mm -hmm. I know I spoke with you about that once, but tell me why you're such an advocate for this and, and fill us in on some of the wonderful experiences that you've had. Well, I think you know, not only throughout New Jersey, I think throughout the country, communities are changing. Um, and for a community like ours, you, you're seeing a lot of different cultures and, and people come here, and for good reason. Um, a lot of people that come here work in Manhattan. A lot of people that come here are professionals. The thing that I like to see about it is a lot of people that are coming here now, and they're buying homes, and they're making this their home, and they're people that have families and children. And we're seeing a lot of children, and we're seeing a lot of different uh, cultures. Listen, the Asian, population in Sea Caucus is growing. Those children are really geared towards education. If I had a, I, I'm going to tell you a quick short story, but I had 35 kids from Korea here uh, last week, for a week. I had to keep them busy every day, so we did the pool, we did the rec salon, we did the dinosaur park. One day I said, okay, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to take you to the police department, we're going to talk about local government, we're going to visit a firehouse, and then we're going to go see the public library. Well, they went to all those places that day, and at the end of the day, what was the most exciting thing that they did? It was here. They came here, they didn't want to leave. But those children in Korea, just using that as an example, they go to school at 7.30 in the morning, they come home at 4.30, they have dinner and they go back to school again. And in the American culture, you know, we're a little bit different, and having those type of students now in our school system, I think, allows our kids to become a lot more competitive. Um, you know, the valedictorians, and the valedictorians and the salutatorians have been to a lot of graduations. Um, they're kids from different countries. And I think that our children, as they become educated, you know, hand in hand with them, we're going to pick up a little bit on that. And quite frankly, when they get to colleges, we can have the best students in the world here. Um, when you get to a college, well, the best students in our system, when you get to college, that all changes. And I think the competitiveness of these other, being with these other kids is really important. 
not only is it important in school, but when they graduate and go look for a job, they're going to be competing against the same kids. So, listen, I, when, I, when we talk about culture, I think it's wonderful. And I think it's wonderful that, the, that our kids, we didn't get to experience that as children. And that they're experiencing it. They're meeting kids from all over the world. They're learning all different cultures. Nothing but positive things can come out of that. We have the first statue of Mahatma Gandhi in the, in the state of New Jersey. And boy, did I take some bruises over that. Oh, I know you but, did. But that was a gift to us from the people of India. And it was gifted to this community. And I think it's great. And you know, when you talk about a man like that, that was a man of peace and a man of principle. And I think that that message um, got out to the community that, listen, I'm going to do this because I think it's the right thing to do. Whether you think it's popular or not, whether you like it or not, that's up to you and you're entitled to your own opinion. But I thought it was the right thing to do. And that's why we did it. And I think that, I think you're going to see that um, the mindset in the community and throughout the state and throughout the country may begin to change. I think you're right. I think it's throughout the country. But it's starting in little communities like Sea Caucus. Mm -hmm. Not so little anymore. But uh, I think it's, it's just magnificent. We had some international festivals here at the library. I'm sure Jen is planning some more because I'm a member of the Friends of the Library, so I know they are. Um, but it's, it's just wonderful to get inside your head. And the people who view this years to come, I don't know how many people will view it immediately. It's something new that we've done this uh, digital history. But 20 years from now, when Perhaps you've moved on, you've retired to another state, unless you do die here, as you said. Um, people want to get inside the head of their mayor and their leaders to find out why. And you gave us just such a simple explanation that I don't think that anybody could argue with. Plus, of course, learning other cultures. But before we leave your story, is there anything else that you think is important that you might like to add? This is the history of the library and the stories of the people that are directly involved with the library and indirectly. Now, how about Mayor Mike Pinelli? What would you like to leave us with as we end your interview? I think I think the biggest thing with me is unity, and I think it's so important that um, that as a community we're all together. And when you talk about diversity, you talk about different cultures. I think people need to put that stuff aside. I think we need to be more community. I think there's no place better in the town of Seaco because it had to happen than right here. Uh, right here in our school systems, uh, on our streets, in our churches. Um, I think that's what makes us strong. And I think that, um, you know, if I had to, if I had to sh stress in a few words what, when I became mayor, most important thing to me was, and I think that was bringing the community back together. I think we've succeeded. I really do. I agree that you have. I agree that you have, and I think that's a wonderful thought to leave for the future. And we will continue to start it here. As I uh, started my interviews today, prior to that I spent three hours tutoring a young girl from India who's dying to meet you when you're finished with your interview. She's familiar with you. She's seen you before, but never met you personally. I have to tell you, the people from India in, in, in particular, um, I ask, I'm always asking people to do things on a volunteer basis. Uh, and, you know, I solicit a lot of donations for families in town, and not only in town, but throughout the whole county in Lower Bergen during Hurricane Sandy. I mean, we were the hub for bringing in donations to, to help all these people throughout. Uh, those, those really difficult times. And when I put my message out, in five minutes I'm going to have ten Indian women call me saying, where do you want us, how long do you want us there, you know, and let's just get this done. And it happens all the time. And I just hope, um, you know, that that spirit of cooperation continues. And I know it will. I know it will too. Uh, the student's husband just volunteered to work with the literacy program because we're helping his wife. So it is that spirit of, of give back mm -hmm. that sometimes we forget as American raised people, you know, we're busy doing our lives. But uh, as I do this history and I see 
how much the volunteers did to get a public library started and hours that they worked and they worked for no pay. There was no pay. There was a resolution to hire a woman as the librarian and if we have money we'll pay her. It doesn't happen these days. But um, I hope that spirit does regenerate, as you yeah, said. I think we take, I think a lot of times people take things for granted. And uh, in living in the country that we live in, it's a lot of times time. things go very easy to us. Um, but some people don't take things for granted, and some people really want to just pitch in and help. Well, I thank you very much. I know it was difficult to ask you to turn off your phone during this interview because I've heard that phone ring and ring and ring. So thank you, Mayor Canelli, for giving us this insight and history of your career with the town and your assistance with the library. Thank you.